Oh, that's not terrifying in the slightest. I think that's scarier than some of the games we've been playing. Greetings and salutations, viewers. I'm Star Princess here, Jesse, coming at you with another review of uh, YouTube Red's uh, well-known and well-advertised series Scare PewDiePie, where Felix is constantly getting himself scared by real-life horror games, uh, with a bit of a monthly fee to see all of it. We are now finally touching on the last two episodes of this ten-part series. I'm combining it into one whole video talking about part about episode 9 and 10 as we deal with pewds getting scared one last time with real life horror games and seeing finally if once and for all if this is a truly worthy monetary investment so with that let us begin talking about both of them we'll start first with episode 9 for last time, no Girl Scout cookies, please. Well, that's awkward. In this particular episode, entitled Naughty Pie, which right off the bat you can kind of question the title of that particular episode, this one was, uh, like with some of the other ones, it was focused semi, I think, on one particular game. In this one, it was I mainly focused on Amnesia. Which makes a lot of sense, considering a lot of people first got to know Pewds through his Amnesia LPs. Like, I personally also, uh, well actually I first watched his, um, his Penumbra one first, then I watched his Amnesia, but yeah, that's where a lot of people kind of know PewDiePie from, is the Amnesia stuff. So I guess it makes sense that at the very end, he's kind of doing it where it all began for his channel in a way. Because he's done stuff before that, but most people know him from the Amnesia stuff, so... Makes sense that they would end on that note. But that being said, there were some strange things that, uh... Were very much not Amnesia-based in this particular episode. Oh. I... Yep, Amnesia the Dark Descent. That's what I was thinking, because it's like, I'm talking to myself. I mean, the premise of it pretty much was Amnesia. Like, he was getting notes from himself, like Daniel was in Amnesia, saying, like, we have Amnesia, we have to find ourselves. So he was kind of wandering around. Strangely enough, in a dressed up like a girl, like a, a maid's outfit or something. I don't know, maybe just because Pewds likes to dress up as a girl sometimes? I don't know, but for some reason he was dressed up like a a. a some kind of like maid or doll or something. His legs were in casts, so he had trouble moving around for whatever reason. Maybe to emanate the uh, the stiffness of how you probably move in amusement games, particularly whenever a monster showed up and your sanity went down to. <clears throat> is he talking to himself? What the hell? Why is he dressed up like a milkmaid? What is this? Pax all over again? But they also were going into even weirder territory with this that was definitely not amnesia based. Like, they actually had, um, like, for one, they had a couple of, like, well, somewhat cultist related kind of characters. Like, two guys were, um, spinning pews around, mumbling stuff, having him look at a Ouija board, and it was kind of weird. Like, they were harassing him in that sense, and it's like, that, that seems more like, until Dawn or Resident Evil 4 than, like, than Amnesia. I'm getting dizzy. Knock it off. I'm going to be staring at you. Is he sticking his tongue out through the mask? And then the whole twist the whole time is it actually was Anthony and Ian from Smosh who were uh, the cultist kind of guys wearing the masks and freaking pewds out. So that was kind of a nice little fun thing. He doesn't know who he is. Oh no, he does have amnesia. Hey guys, we were fooling you the entire time. But then they also had this weird situation where 
some girl came out in like a dominatrix kind of outfit and she was whipping him and it was constantly like say the safety word say the safety word it's like and she even like told him to get on the floor and bark like a dog and it's like um that's not amnesia related not sure why you went there I'm fairly certain that he's not into that but who knows you never know with these people, but it was weird. It was like that. I guess that's why they called it Naughty Pie. Oh, okay. I'm fairly certain that no dominatrix was in amnesia. Oh my god. <laughs> what the hell? But it had fairly different, like, uh, references to amnesia, like, Mr. Chair came back again, although he got possessed at one point, and, uh, the grunt, or the bro, kinda showed up at one point as well, uh, they were saying the stuff like sugar tits, which was something that Pewds had said that the grunt said at some point, but, yeah, there were plenty of references to that, and also for some reason they had, uh, someone dress up as Pewds behind a glass and kind of pretend to be him as well. Oh! Hey look! It's you! Sort of. It's clearly a double. Oh no, don't twerk, don't twerk! Oh, why? Why the twerk? But yeah, they had various references here and there, like the knights and the grunts and everything. Most of it seemed to be trying to be amnesia-based, not quite hitting it with a few little instances, especially with the, uh, the whipping and the plates full of maggots and, uh, cockroaches and raw meat and such, but it was overall interesting. Definitely, though, not as strong as some of the other episodes, I will admit, even with, um, Anthony and Ian from Smosh kind of making a quick little appearance there and taunting pewds the way they were. So, I didn't feel like this was a very strong ending to the series. Which also kind of brings me into episode 10, literally titled Game Over. Well, I guess that's, uh, let's see what the ending is. To be honest with this last episode, there isn't much really to say about it. Mainly, it was a clip show. Like, various points, like Pewds was in the middle of having a party with the entire cast and crew from Skybound Maker, YouTube Red, what have you, having a party after three weeks of, you know, filming and being scared of his mind. Everyone was just having a good time and having a bit of fun. And in dispersed between all that, there was little moments of what happened during the show. It was essentially just, you know, remembering the good times, as it were. That was really much to say about that. Hey, I remember that egg! Hey, I remember that lasers! I remember them maggots! I remember that scream! Oh wait, that's every video of Pews's ever. Although it didn't stop uh, the actors and such from playing a few more little tricks on Pewds at the very end by essentially having Nikki show up at the very end, you know, being crazy, you know, a bunch of conflict here and there with, like, shootings, which was a really poor shooting, by the way. Oh my god! In slow motion, you can so easily tell it's fake! Oh my god! Really? And, you know, everyone running around and kind of grouping together saying like, Oh, we've all been joking the whole time. We're all actors. Even the executive producer that we thought was the executive producer was an actor. Everybody's an actor. Everybody was just playing it up for reality TV purposes, which, again, leaves a very bad taste in my mouth because it's like, this stuff shouldn't be the main focus of this series. It's supposed to be about pewds getting scared by real-life horror games. Why do you have to drag the reality TV crap into it? It's not necessary. You could easily do a good show without the reality TV crap at the very end. Just saying. Yes, we know. No, really? Ugh. See, reality TV is a bunch of bull. 
And that is pretty much the end of Scary Pewdiepie. Like, they seem to almost hint that there's going to be something at the very end, because uh, right at the end, as Pewds was saying his goodbye, there was, like, some serial killer behind his head. But I don't know if they're actually going to continue on with this series. It'd be kind of interesting, I guess. But I think the main question everybody is kind of asking is, you know, from all the advertising that you've been seeing about Scare PewDiePie all over YouTube, all the stuff about YouTube Red, and is this worth the the monthly subscription fee to YouTube Red? And honestly, I have to say no. I hate to be that kind of person, but it really doesn't feel like this is a worth while venture like honestly i'll admit the show was okay i'll admit i had some entertaining moments entertaining moments with it i did enjoy a good chunk of it there were plenty where i thought it was a little ridiculous especially with the reality tv stuff thrown into the mix i still enjoyed the show and i appreciate that a lot of time money effort talent went into making this like it's it's really kind of an okay kind of thing. I give them credit for trying, but this, if this is their big uh, show that they wanted to advertise people to subscribe to YouTube Red and pay the monthly subscription fee, I think they failed in that aspect because the show is okay, but really the only ones who are going to be interested in it probably are just going to be the fans of PewDiePie. And while he does have plenty of fans with over 45 million subscribers, the truth of the matter is most uh, people who are probably subscribed to Pewds are younger. Like, not to say that there aren't adults like myself and others who are subscribed to Pewds and enjoy his content, but usually the more vocal and more proactive fans of any YouTuber usually are much younger, which means they don't normally have the extra cash to shill out for a monthly subscription just to see this kind of stuff. Like, I'll admit the show is okay. I will admit that, you know, they did put a lot of effort into it. I admit I did enter have some entertaining moments with it, but at the end of the day, I don't feel that it's worth paying for YouTube Red just to see this. And especially considering you could probably just, since it's all out now, you could probably just watch all ten episodes, you know, in one sitting, and then not even pay the subscription fee next month. It's, it's kind of pointless. So, I hate to say that, especially considering obviously a lot of time went into it, and Pewds is obviously very proud of it. I mean, I got him on Conan O'Brien and such. He had fun doing it, and it was still kind of entertaining to watch, but overall, I don't feel like it's worth subscribing to YouTube Red. I'm sorry. But overall, like I said, like, there were problems with this series. There really was. Like I said, when they were focusing more on one particular game, instead of just trying to branch out to different little bits, then it was more entertaining when he was more, you know, bouncing off of his friends like Markiplier or MatPat and Egoraptor, then it was more entertaining. But a lot of times it was very jumbled, it was very messy, and the fact that they uh, kept trying to throw in this reality TV stuff really irks me because, well, I'm not a fan of reality TV to begin with, obviously you can tell by the way I've been talking about it, but the fact of it is, it didn't add anything to the series as a whole. It was just padding, and it wasn't very good padding. So, take for, of it what you will. I still enjoyed watching this. I still commemorate everyone who worked on it. They put a lot of time and effort and talent and money into it. But, in the end, they would probably have done better by maybe putting it straight to DVD or something, because... Paying a subscription fee for this seems kind of a waste, especially considering how much they probably spent on advertising it all over YouTube and the internet as a whole. So, 
But again, these are all just my personal opinions on the matter. You're always welcome to take your own thoughts on the subject. And, you know, see it for yourself if you must. But personally, I don't think it's a, that YouTube Red, especially if this is, excuse me, especially if this is their, their crowning achievement at this current point that that's worth giving money to so that's that's just what I think but uh, you know I hope you guys enjoyed this strange and interesting romp into the world of scare PewDiePie and getting to see where uh, where I guess uh, Pewds went with this for the three weeks that he was vlogging in LA eh, take of it what you will but for now this is Star Princess HLC saying Thank you very much for watching, and have a fond farewell. And let me know in the comments below what you would like to see me review next. Bye-bye!